and this was before PSDA. So that's why I, I came down here because I really am a transit supporter. I ride the bus right now. I use PSDA uh, many times, teaching my daughter to, to do that. So it's, it's really kind of exciting for me to come here and show you these plans and this study and, and where we are with PSDA and transit in not only Pinellas County but the Bay Area. And you may have heard about uh, this alternatives analysis. This is a study we've been working on with these partners uh, for the last couple of years to identify where we're going in the future, how we are going to get people around in the future, where we're going to need to get people around in the future, which is how all of these partners came together. Uh, the Department of Transportation, they're taking care of, of uh, part of a study that may involve the Howard Franklin Bridge. Of course, the Metropolitan Planning Organization helped us identify, well, where do we have to get people to, where are they going to be living, not just now, but in 10 years, 20 years, down through 2050. And then, of course, we're in it as far as the transit element, and then the new Tampa Bay Area Regional Transit Authority as well to help shape the whole regional view. This was the uh, team, the Project Advisory Committee team, really nicely diversified. Uh, Frank Hibbard was the chair. Uh, we had Harriet Crozier from Largo. She was the vice chair. Of course, uh, Secretary Skelton from FDOT District 7, Karen Seal from the MPO. Uh, Mayor Johnson was our chair at the time. And we also had uh, Commissioner Welch, he's on the Board of County, Com Welsh on the, on the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, Jeff Danner, who's our chair now, he also is a representative of T. Barta. We also had uh, Dave Mechanic from Hart and uh, Harry Cohen from Hillsborough MPO. So it's really neat to see a great partnership and a collaboration of all these people coming together and working not just with the engineering team and with the different agencies, but a lot of public outreach. And you can see it in here, we have stakeholder and citizen forums. They had uh, some really neat, uh, and you can still see them online at Pinellas County Communi Communications, e-town halls that were not just broadcast on television, but on the internet and through blogs and through email. And we had people who could call in and listen on the phone. Who's telling me they, it wasn't Phil, Oh, okay. But you actually were one of the people on the phones who was voting and answering questions. Thank you for that, by the way. So initially, when we started off, they came up with this area, thanks to our partners. This is where we're going to need to move people looking for in, the, in Pinellas County and the Bay Area. We're going to be somewhere between Clearwater, the Gateway Area, St. Petersburg, and then, of course, over to Tampa. So that was the focus. This is kind of the uh, progression this is all part of a, a federal process, an alternatives analysis. You do this so that as you move forward, you can go to the federal government and say, look, this is our plan. This is what we've done. We've studied all of the alternatives. That's where it comes from. Of where we can go, of the corridors, of the modes, and is it going to be fast bus? Is it going to be uh, bus rapid transit? And this is the plan we've come up to, or come up with, and then you hope that they'll say, okay, we like it. We will give you funds, and it's very competitive. But moving forward, we are hoping we can get some uh, federal funds to help implement this. It uh, takes a lot of work. We've had a lot of people working on this for a long time. You start with the geography, and then the, you start to look at the routes, and then the connections, and at the very end, you come up with what's known as a locally preferred alternative. And that's the mode where it's going to go, uh, stations where it's going to stop, um, and the exact routing, and we're very, very close on that. And I'll show it to you. Some of it um, may be a little small, and I apologize, but this is where we started. And I'll, I'll give you some for, for instances. When our uh, last executive director arrived here in 2007, he's driving down 4th Street. I was with him in uh, St. Petersburg, and he's looking at it, he goes, this is perfect. Look, you got this nice median, you got the businesses. This would be perfect for light rail. And he's a rail guy, built it in Portland and built it in New York City, so I'm thinking, all right, no. And it makes sense, I'm looking at it. So, of course, that was one of the ones we're looking at. And of course, you, you, the east-west, you're looking at Elmerton, East Bay, Bryan Derry, uh, Route 60, Gulf to Bay. So you put these together, and then we had stakeholder forums where we invited people from anywhere in the public. We wanted business leaders. We wanted groups uh, like Phil. We wanted people to come in. We needed your feedback. We wanted to know where do you need it to go, where do you want it to go, what are your thoughts. So early on, I don't know how early on, but I remember this. I'll never forget this, actually. We're looking at it, and some guy in the back of the room at this early stakeholder meeting goes, I see 4th Street, because 4th Street was kind of at the time leading north-south from St. Pete to Caroline. Because did anybody look at what the storm surge would do for a Cat 1 storm? 
on a fourth street, you could have heard a pin drop. I'm tell I swear I heard Homer Simpson go, oh! <laughs> so this beautiful thing that our former executive director really liked and some other people were pushing for has actually kind of been moved. Thanks to a stakeholder, a public stakeholder who came in and helped us out. So it's moved a little west and you'll see the final alignment. Also, as part of the alternatives, you look at all of the different modes of transit. Can it be commuter rail? Is it going to be light rail, express bus, bus rapid transit, which has many, uh, many, many forms across the country. But a lot of people don't know what bus rapid transit is. In some places, like actually this is Eugene, Oregon, it's a, it's a bus running every few minutes, double length bus in its own right of way and it moves people very quickly and there's not a lot stopping in some areas it's just buses running every three to five minutes in their own lane on uh, not necessarily right of way but its own lane and part of the highway for commuter services sometimes it's just buses running more frequently uh, it's basically whatever the, the local transit systems can do to move people as quickly as possible and not make them wait at a bus stop or you know the others uh, light rail as well which of course runs in its own right of way and this after about a year and a half and was just ratified January 30th by the uh, team that I was talking about earlier, the Project Advisory Committee, is what we have as far as the locally preferred alternative. And it starts down, well, wherever, wherever you want it. I guess we're closer to Clearwater. I'll start up here. So it starts in downtown Clearwater, moved down, and East Bay, West Bay was the chosen route going east and west. Now, the final engineering design, I'm told, is when they're going to decide, well, are we going to use the CSX corridor or, or Missouri Avenue? But this is the, the area, and it'll go by the airport, and then down toward uh, the, the connection where we'll go over the bay. Now the bridge, Howard Franklin Bridge, is scheduled to be rebuilt in 2023. So that's why this is included. That's the south span, which would be north bound. So we, we need desperately this connection to Tampa. So that's where FDOT comes in, and that's that leg of it as well. Pretty much down the 275 corridor with the jog over toward Pinellas Park and US 19. And it looks a little funny, but the reason that's there is the potential for growth and the current employment areas around Valpac. Those are the areas where you've got a lot of people going to. We've got to get people there and get people back. So that's why the jog is there. Then it goes down a little bit to the 275 corridor by Tropicana Field and then it ends up downtown at the medical centers. So we've got a lot of draws, a lot of places that people want to go. Now that's just the main trunk line. This also involves, this whole process and this whole project is also dependent upon boosting the bus service throughout the county to serve these. And I'll talk a little bit more about this as I go on, but that's a major part of it. And I'll show you what's harder to see. These will also be worked out a little later in the project, but where is it going to go as far as it's loop around connecting the medical centers in downtown and then moving back up? This is in downtown St. Petersburg. And, of course, we also want to be able to, to include the Tropicana Field because you have to. That's our responsibility. We want to get people to and from, get people in Tampa a chance to come over in North County to, to use that without having to drive. 